In this video, we're going to take a look at CICD pipelines with Android and Circle CI. So first of all, what is CICD? Continuous integration, continuous de development or deployment, several things you can make that D stand for. But nonetheless, we know that individual developer, developers will commit to a version control system like GitHub, GitLab, or something like that. And CICD is essentially a value added chain of events that can occur after that commit has happened. So I commit my changes to VCS, and then after that, it works through the CICD pipeline. Maybe there's a build step, maybe there's a technical debt analysis, something like SonarCube, maybe a series of unit tests, which is what we're going to look at here. And if all of those tests passed, then our build turns green and we know we're good. So, to set all this up, we need to create a config.yaml file, and that config.yml file explains each of these value-added steps that we're going to need to go through. So, a couple things we'll need as prerequisites. First, we need a project. Second, we need to commit that project to our version control system of choice. In this case, I'm using GitHub. Next, we need to log in to CircleCI and create an account. So, I've gone here in incognito mode, and you see if I hit sign up, it's going to encourage me to sign up with GitHub or with Bitbucket. I've already done this, which is why I'm showing this in incognito mode. So now let me show you what it looks like after I've logged in. You can see here it's showing me the pipeline build for a separate project that I've already set up in CircleCI. Let's go in here and choose Add Projects. Now it's looking at my repository on GitHub, and it's able to pull up all of my repositories, which I have quite a few. The one that I want to set up here is my plant diary queue. So I'm going to choose Setup Project. Now, from the dropdown, we can choose our programming language, which will build a sample YAML file for us. So the default one is simply Hello World. We can look at Gradle with Java, and we can also look at Maven with Java. I will say this, I tried a few different combinations, and I found that the default file did not work for me, so I created my own, which I'll share with you on GitHub, and I'll make it part of this project. But essentially, here's what it looks like. I'm using a Docker image. You see CircleCI provides us with a series of default Docker images. If you're not familiar with what Docker is, simple way to put it is kind of like an operating system in a box, one that you can spin up on demand. The nice thing is that CircleCI has provided us with a few default ones specifically for Android. This one here is for AP, API 29, which is Android Q. Now the steps are those different, if you think of those little donuts I had the build go through, the steps are essentially those donuts. So restore cache means there's certain information that can be cached locally on this image. Uh, so after the first time, we can go back and grab it down from cache. Uh, Change dependencies. This is one thing that I realized was not working from the default uh, uh, configuration YAML file that they provided. I had to, it, it, it had a, it had a uh, permissions error on one folder, did a little searching on it and found that I needed to add this. That took care of the issue. Um, download dependencies, save cache, so save this for the next time that we run. Run the test, which is the important part we want to look for. Store artif artifacts, which are like reports and then store test results or the results of the tests. So a fairly straightforward YAML file. Now, we need to put this in a specific directory of our Android Studio project. So uh, easiest way to do that is to come into Android Studio, right click, and then say show and explore. When the Explorer window comes up, right click, choose new, and then we need to make a, what's usually considered a hidden folder, which is one that starts with a period. So period circle, CI, just like so. And then inside of this, we can put that config YAML file. I've shown it to you already, and what I'm going to do is push this up to GitHub, and I'll put the GitHub link in the comments of this video. So if you just want to borrow my YAML file verbatim, maybe make some changes to it, you can access it out there on GitHub. Now, the neat thing is that Android Studio recognizes this when I go down and I say git and I say commit directory. It's going to find, oh, okay, there's the circle CI file. So I'm going to go ahead and tick that, and I'm going to say add circle CI YAML file, something like so, uh, to integrate with CI CD. And we'll say commit and push. So we'll go ahead and say commit, and then we'll go down to version control. 
and we'll do git repository and push. We see the confirmation message, push is successful. Let's go ahead and take a look at my plant diary queue on GitHub. And I see two commits. This is a relatively new project, so add circle CI YAML file. Okay, looking very good so far. So now I navigate back to circle CI and I'm going to choose start building. Uh, yes, you see I've it, this, this is the step we just did. We just added the YAML file, so we'll choose start building. You see it's running. This will take a while, so I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to speed up the video a little bit because this does take a few minutes. If we click on the build step here, we can, we can run down and we can see the progress that it's currently walking through. So spin up environment, check out code, restoring, restoring cache, change permissions, download dependencies, so on and so forth. Note that the run tests is indeed green, and if I wish to see this again, I can simply hit rerun. Let's go ahead and make a test that doesn't pass, though. So in my example unit test, let's say fun addition is not correct. We'll annotate this with the at test annotation so that we know that it's going to be a test. And then we'll say assert equals, and we'll say four, and then we'll say one plus two. And save, and right click, and let's choose git. Okay, add an intentionally failing test. And commit and push, and push. Now let's go back to our pipeline. Notice I can select at the top which project I want to run. We see the last pipeline was successful. Let's, now you notice it automatically kicked off. There's nothing I had to press in here to make it start running. It kicked off because it was notified by the commit to GitHub. So we click on running, we click on build, and here we can see, we can watch as it's walking through each of these steps. So as I was talking, it did the spin up environment, the checkout code, restoring cache. As a matter of fact, you might notice this is running a little bit faster than it did last time, uh, because indeed it, it did use that cache. Now let's hit the run test step. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, looks like it didn't work. Okay, so we click and we see failed. And we go to tests and what do we see? Addition is not correct, example unit test. Expected four but was three. So sure enough, when we go through and we add a, uh, when we add a unit test that does not work, it tells us it doesn't work. If we go back and take a look at our working test, we see that all your tests are passing. Now I hate to leave something broken, so I'm going to go ahead just for my own sanity. I'm gonna go ahead and update that to three. I'm going to do a commit, fix failing test. I'll pause the video for a moment because I know we've already seen a lot of this. The push has succeeded. You see it automatically picked up the running. We go to running, we go to build. And we see that run test this time has indeed succeeded. You see the green check mark. We go to test. We see a good job. All tests are passing. And we have earned indeed the green marks. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.